Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Holly Williams? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Holly Ann Williams was born on January 14, 1987, and lived in Nashville, Tennessee. She had tried to make it in the skincare business, but ended up getting involved in sex work. Holly used the name Layla Love for her covert encounters. In 2018, she met a troubled man named William Lanway, who went by the name Bill. He delivered packages for Amazon part-time, and occasionally functioned as the dealer for private poker games. Bill moved into Holly's apartment and became financially dependent on her. When he found out that she was a sex worker, he became enraged and tried to discourage her from continuing. The couple argued frequently about this and other matters. In April of 2019, Holly filed for an order of protection, but later dropped it and reunited with Bill. There were many breakups and reconciliations in the relationship. At one point, Bill looked at Holly's phone and found a radiologist who was a customer of hers. He texted him and threatened to inform his wife if he did not stop seeing Holly. This type of behavior angered Holly because it was driving away her customers. In January 2020, Holly accused Bill of trying to strangle her. On another occasion, Bill took Holly's dog and left it near a busy highway where it was killed by a car. Holly installed security cameras in her apartment because she was afraid of Bill. He was captured on camera entering her apartment and looking around. Despite her fear, Holly continued her relationship with Bill. This couple just could not seem to remain separated. Over Bill's objections, Holly continued to function as a sex worker. In early 2020, Holly serviced a customer named Eric Charles Mont. He was raised in Austin, Texas, and his family owned car dealerships. They sold different makes of vehicle, including Toyota, Cadillac, and Volkswagen. Eric worked as an executive for the company and was wealthy. He was married to a woman named Sherry. The couple had two children. Eric owned a 7,000-square-foot house next to the Austin Country Club. In addition, he had a lake house and a boat. Eric was not well-liked by everyone at work. Some people believed that he had a sense of entitlement and was aloof. In addition to engaging the services of sex workers, Eric would frequently gamble and consume alcohol. On February 3, 2020, Eric contacted Holly Williams, wanting to schedule a meeting at a hotel in Nashville, Tennessee. He requested a 90-minute visit. Eric traveled to Nashville to visit his son, spent the night with Holly as planned, then spent the next night with a different sex worker. When he was done with his extramarital adventure, he returned to Austin, Texas. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On the morning of March 13, 2020, a white Acura sedan was discovered in a ditch alongside a gravel road at a construction site. When the police arrived, they discovered that the vehicle belonged to 33-year-old Holly Williams. Her body was inside, along with the body of 36-year-old Bill Lanway. Again, Bill was Holly's boyfriend. Here's what the police found during the course of their investigation. Both Holly and Bill had been shot in the head. Holly had also been shot in the torso. The Acura sedan was about three miles from Holly's apartment. Initially, many people believed that Bill must have been the shooter due to his reputation for being violent, but there was no murder weapon in the vehicle. Video surveillance from Holly's apartment showed that on March 12, 2020, the day before the discovery of the bodies, Holly and Bill were at Holly's apartment. At about 11.40 p.m., they exited the apartment together and made their way into the parking lot. No video cameras covered the parking lot, but the audio was captured. After Holly's Acura started, Bill yelled, what the blank? At this point, shots can be heard, along with Holly screaming and saying, help me, help me. As Holly continued to scream, the car drove away. Video surveillance also captured some strange occurrences in the days leading up to the murders. Two strange men approached Holly's door. It was clear they were trying to conceal their identities. 
At another time, a different man came to the door and knocked. The police asked the public for help identifying the men, but had no success. The police realized that somebody using a VOIP number had called Holly. Eventually, they were able to track this number to a man named Adam Carey. He was a former Marine who worked in private security. In 2016, he had been arrested for impersonating a police officer and possessing pipe bombs. He spent four months in prison. Starting with this lead about Adam, the police were eventually able to uncover a complex murder-for-hire plot. Here's what they learned by connecting all the dots. On March 1, 2020, after Eric had returned from his encounter with Holly in Nashville, he received a text message demanding $25,000. If he didn't pay, his wife was going to hear about his extracurricular activity in Tennessee. Eric knew this blackmail scheme was connected to Holly and not to the other woman, but he didn't immediately know that the perpetrator was her boyfriend, Bill Lanway. Looking for advice, Eric contacted the general manager of the Toyota dealership where he worked, who put him in touch with a man named Gil Paulette. Gil was essentially a security guard who the dealership paid to prevent homeless people from vandalizing cars. When Gil told Eric to go to the police, Eric indicated that was not an ideal solution. At this point, Gil decided to help Eric by implementing a bizarre and complex plan. He told Eric that he would hire a team who would conduct surveillance and peacefully negotiate with whoever was blackmailing him. Gil promised that no illegal behavior would occur. Eric agreed to this ill-advised plan and was fine with the $50,000 that Gil requested. Gil hired a former Marine named Brian Brockway to run the operation. Brian, in turn, hired Adam Carey. Again, Adam was the person who had been arrested for impersonating a police officer. At this point, the Special Forces operation involved Gil, Brian, and Adam. Two other men were also hired, David and Tony. On March 7, 2020, Adam and David met in Nashville. After watching Holly's apartment for a while, they concluded that Bill must have been the one behind the blackmail scheme. Not long after this, Tony also showed up in Nashville. Both David and Tony found Adam to be unprofessional, reckless, and a loose cannon. On March 10, 2020, the men tried to talk to Bill Landway, but Bill simply drove away after offering a middle finger extension gesture. The next day, March 11, Bill called Eric and sent him a text message. Bill wanted the $25,000 payment by 8 p.m. On this same day, Brian arrived in Nashville. By this point, David and Tony had left the top secret mission. They no longer wanted anything to do with it. Brian and Adam were there by themselves, and they developed a new plan. They told Gil they would eliminate Bill for $120,000, but then they claimed that Holly was also involved in the blackmail scheme, so they needed $200,000 to kill both of them. Gil contacted Eric and told them the two murders would cost $750,000. So Gil wanted to make $550,000 as the middleman. Eric transferred Gil $150,000 on March 12, 2020, which was the day of the murders. Over the next year, Eric transferred Gil another $900,000. It's not clear why Eric paid Gil more than the amount they had initially agreed to. Investigators felt as though they had a pretty good case against Gil, Brian, and Adam, but they were not as confident about the case against Eric. What if he didn't really know what the other men were going to do? After all, Gil had been hired by the car dealership to chase homeless people. Why would Eric assume that Gil was a killer? Investigators spoke to David, who again had spent some time with Adam in Nashville. David agreed to go undercover, and he met with both Adam and Brian. Adam made a few incriminating comments, but Brian supplied much more information. He told David exactly what happened outside Howie's apartment. Brian and Adam approached Holly and Bill and shot them both. Then they drove their car off the gravel road three miles away. On December 10, 2021, Gil, Brian, and Adam were arrested. Investigators convinced Gil to cooperate. He called Eric and pretended that one of the hitmen was demanding another $25,000. On the phone call, Eric offered $150,000 to take care of the situation permanently, just like last time. As a result, 
Eric was also arrested. In December 2022, Gill pleaded guilty to murder for hire conspiracy, conspiracy to commit kidnapping, and kidnapping resulting in death. In November 2023, the other three men went to trial. Brian and Adam were found guilty of the same charges, but Eric was only found guilty of murder for hire conspiracy. All three men are facing a mandatory sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. Gill will have a chance of receiving a lighter sentence due to his cooperation. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Bill Landway had some terrible experiences in his past. His father murdered his mother in front of him, and as an adult, Bill lost a daughter to cancer. Despite these tragedies, and the fact that Bill was a murder victim, he has not attracted a lot of sympathy. Bill was an aggressive and violent stalker who repeatedly harassed Holly and killed her dog. He was such a despised figure, many people who knew him initially assumed that he must have been the killer. In an indirect way, Bill was the killer. His attempt to blackmail Eric set the disaster in motion. He was virtually a conspirator in Holly's murder. Item number two, Holly Williams was ambitious and developed a taste for the high life. She liked expensive jewelry, clothing, and vacations. In her career as a sex worker, Holly charged $1,500 a session and $2,500 for a couple. Sometimes she earned between twenty dollars and $30,000 in a weekend by taking advantage of customers she referred to as whales. Despite her financial success, Holly felt like a failure and believed that she was being punished for being a sex worker. Furthermore, she understood that her line of work was exceedingly dangerous. Holly routinely worried about being murdered by a customer, but hoped that the cost of her service was too high for violent individuals to afford. Item number three, the dealership security guard, Gil Paled, had been in the Israeli army, but claimed that he was some type of special forces operator for the Israeli intelligence agency. Twelve years after moving to the United States, Gil was hired as a bodyguard for the actor Charlie Sheen. In 2014, he was fired and moved to Austin, Texas. There he found financial problems and ended up working at the Toyota dealership to prevent vandalism. All of Gil's advanced combat elite special forces training was paying off. He was now living the dream of any former highly trained soldier, protecting cars by scaring away homeless people. These must have been some extremely dangerous homeless people. Maybe they were part of an evil conspiracy to disrupt new car sales by breaking mirrors and bending windshield wipers. If sales dropped off, the world could descend into chaos. Gil was the only one who could preserve democracy against this nefarious plan. Or the dealership could have hired a teenage high school dropout and handed him a flashlight. Come to think of it, that plan would have worked out better. Item number four, what do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Eric Mond became angry when he was blackmailed. He tried to solve a simple problem using a complex method and involved people who only made the situation more complex. Somehow, Eric had assembled a team of immature and sensation-seeking former military operators. They were running around Nashville, Tennessee, as if they were secret agents from a Mission Impossible or James Bond movie. In reality, this case was about a stalker who was trying to get his girlfriend to stop being a sex worker. Eric should have simply called the police. None of those men should have been involved in any way. Now moving to my final thoughts. The theme of this case is an unwillingness to accept reality. Holly Williams could not accept a lack of money. She desired to have the finer things in life, despite knowing that sex work was dangerous. Furthermore, she refused to remain separated from her boyfriend. Bill Landway refused to accept Holly's choice to be a sex worker. He responded with violence and eventually with blackmail. Adam Carey and Brian Brockway wanted to feel as though they were on some type of top secret mission. They could not accept a life without constant action. Gil Paled falsely believed that he was an invincible super soldier sent to Texas to battle homeless people. And Eric Mond wanted to avoid the consequences of his infidelity. Everyone in this case destroyed their lives pursuing immature and grandiose fantasies. Those are my thoughts on the case of Holly Williams. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. 
They consistently generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.